I do want to mention one sad thing really quickly. This is Ryong's last game. Of NES? Oh, because he hasn't had a buy yet. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yes, this is Ryong's last game. He's four and three, so he has eight games. You're right. This is his last game in NESL group <laughs> stages. I'm crying. It's all right, man. We'll make it. We have to move on, Andre. Hakuna Matata. Okay, I'm ready to go. Let's go ahead and introduce the players. Go ahead, Frodan. In the bottom top right, we have Ryong, the Terran from Team Slayers. And Ryong's just been playing fantastic against this player, Dark Force, from Team Alternate Attacks. Both players have moments where it's like, wow, brilliant play. And just sometimes uh, not able to really capitalize on their opponent's mistakes. And you can see Ryong was had moments of vulnerability, but in the end, played just rock solid Terran Reserve. Like it wasn't, he was just immovable, never overextended, and he didn't have to really drop everywhere and really t uh, drag his attention uh, every which way. Instead, he just played uh, tempo based TVZ, so it was very impressive to watch. Now we see a very similar opening from both players again, nothing really to change, but Dual Side has some interesting propositions, especially for the early slash mid game with a very exposed natural. And then Exposed Third 2, what, what are your thoughts on Dual Sight, TBC? Definitely lends itself to, you know, having that Road Circle Bailing bust be very relevant in this particular map. It's part of the metagame more so than other maps, so I think Ryung has to kind of be wary about that. Oh man, I love this. Frodan, I love this. The early gas, no matter what, if you don't use it or you do use it, I think you should always make this gas on maps where Road Circle Bailing is in the metagame. Because it basically mm. says, hey, be careful, because I'm really capable of doing something really early. Yeah, right now Dark Force is pointing at the SUV with half a closed eye and saying, you better watch yourself. Shake. Uh, no. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to go with that? I want to know. It was a, you, you can see that Ryong is... I'll tell uh, you off cast, bro. All right, okay, it was a song, man. Watch um, yourself. Shake your... Show me what you're working with. No? <laughs> you know what I'm I talking know, about? Man. That was... I don't know that, that kind of music I'll, you listen I'll, I'll to, YouTube Andre. You, I swear. If you combine your music taste with Roddy's music taste, we would have like sir, the worst concert. It's it's known to man Jersey kind. Shore music taste, okay? That's what it is. You I'm should just, know. I'm just gonna pretend like that wasn't said. But we do see that uh, Ryung is, is getting a good scout of his opponent's base. You really do like that kind of music, don't you? No, no, no. Yeah, I know you, Andre. I'm all over the place, bro. You actually know. You know I'm all over the place. <laughs> Actually, like you don't even listen to music at all when you ladder. You're like one of the few people who don't require music whatsoever when you I ladder. I listen to uh, Terran music. It's good enough for me. That's true. Terran music. Dude, those covers on YouTube with uh, My Terran God. music always gets me pumped up. I do it before I do anything. Before I work out, before I eat, before I shower. As I shower, I listen to the Terran music. When you sleep. I'm listening to Terran music right now as well. You can't hear it. Good stuff, bro. <laughs> Good stuff. Now let's, let's focus back on the Terran base. You can see that he's going for Reactor Hellions at this point. Very, again, similar. Now, the big thing is that you can um, mix it up a lot. On this map in particular, you, Hellion Banshee is very effective because uh, the spots where Zerg have to defend are a lot tougher, especially with linear formation. Creep has to extend a little bit farther out than normal. Sometimes that's why we see Quad Queen on this map to spread it in two directions, one to the north, one to the east. You can see Dark Force getting that third queen out, and so it won't have the most optimal creep spread to deal with these Banshees. I'm trying to think if Banshees is an appropriate response on this map. I, I don't I mind th it. I think it's good. We've seen players like Marine King do it. And yeah. I mean, sometimes the ants, sometimes Terrans just try to go really aggressive with Marauder Hellion, but I don't necessarily like it on this map either, though. Well, my biggest problem is that there's a Zergling Bailing bust around now uh, when a Terran player just gets out four Hellions. So the, the Banshee is going to be a little bit off timed for that. I feel like a lot of investment is kind of broken, and you will lose this base inevitably. So. I don't know if it's the best choice given on what, given to what Ryong actually saw in this beginning stage. That extractor, you have to be so careful of that, man. I mean, that is super scary because there can be a, a ton of banelings coming out right now into your base. So, I don't know. Maybe he's just super confident with his Hellions at this point, and he, he knows he can hold things off. I, I'm just, I, I'm a little bit puzzled about that that choice. But okay, Banshees. 
<laughs> and you can see the first, it's not going to be one Banshee, it's going to be multiple Banshees. You see double armory in production from Ryung, so that shouldn't mean he's going to go for mech once again. Now mech on dual site isn't exactly a style that we usually see. We no. see a lot of marine tank, there's lots of cliffs where you can kind of really capitalize on that. And maybe, you know, you lean over towards some Hellion tanks, but the idea is max straight up on this map. We oh. haven't seen a lot of... Dark Force sees the first armory. He sees both of them. Wow, that's such a big advantage. Dark oh, yeah. Force just had the biggest money overlord scan right there. And basically, he knows... Uh, you, I was just about to say, Dark Force is probably not going to go a super fast hive tech because oh. whoever goes double upgrade mech on a map like this mech i think is most powerful when you're doing the four factory push and you're trying to uh you know overwhelm your opponent with uh, just uh, obviously hellion siege tanks mm. but i don't know double armory feels super slow and i think well, hive tech is going to be really strong or even counter attacking styles would be really strong an interesting difference in this map versus Shadow Temple is that the third is a lot more accessible for Ryung okay. compared to Shadow Temple. And if you go for double armory with this, this quick factories, it requires a hefty amount of gas. And you can see, uh, you know, right now he doesn't necessarily need it, but he's going to start utilizing it, especially if he's going to keep up Banshee production. For now, Hellions are controlling the map. There was a lot of Zerglings in production. You can see Dark Force trying to mini run by attempt, but still gonna just stay on his uh, his economy very nicely, getting his Spire out at the same time. Now again, Muto's very key in dealing with uh, Mech, just because Muto's are so mobile. Speaking of mobile, he's Hellions getting a quick surround on the Queen and able to snipe at a huge stall in the creep spread of Dark Force, and that's very good. If he gets another Queen, that'll be also monumental to the mid game. And I think Dark Force is in a terrible position. I don't know how we let this slip around, but mm. there's just so many Hellions out in the field. And now two Banshees are going to get in here. Three Banshees, excuse me, are going to get in here. Look at that, cleaning up every single unit. The Zerglings are no more. And as it speaks, Queens are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hellion Banshee. Not Looks bad. like they will force, force <laughs> it back. Unfortunate for, for Young, queens. of course. Wow, an expansion style. Okay. This is throwing me for a loop, man. Uh, I don't. I don't even well, know. What to, I, I don't have analytical insight for this build. Well, we can. Uh, we can. We can uh, extrapolate based off game number one. Because remember, Young wanted to go for a fast third in Shadow Temple. Was not able to get it as quickly as he can. Now, what interests me the most is that it's not a planetary, and so it's going to be very hard for him to cover all of the bases. Very easy for counterattacks on dual site, especially with the amount of avenues you have to your opponent's bases. And with Mutas also onto the map, very hard for Mech to cover all bases unless you go for a timing yourself, which is what Ryung is gearing up for with his upgrades eventually, as 2 2 is still just starting for production. Mm -hmm. So from there, we can show you what Ryung is doing. But what's interesting is that Dark Force, uh, what he's. Hmm, I'm, I'm, try I'm trying to find it. He doesn't have. He, he got a third much earlier this game than he did in Shattered Temple. Yes, he did. But yet he hasn't been able to really capitalize on it because of the amount of pressure Ryo has been able to exert. So and it's just very interesting change of dynamic. And he's also keeping up with Mutas. He's just gone Mutas this game and not chosen to actually switch over to Roach. Now he does have the Roach worn in place. He has not yet researched the speed for it. Uh, instead, just continues to go additional Mutas. And let me tell you, 2-2 two -two timings against Mutas <laughs> Beautiful. Pretty nasty. As Beautiful. you can see, these Thors are coming out in pairs. Ryung really getting in his Thor count early oh. uh, before he tries to move out into siege tanks or anything. Third is also safely snuggled up in the top center of the map. There it is. Finally, Roaches are on the field. So he is getting that Glio Reconstitution. Plus one flyer attack is also being upgraded by a ton of Roaches. This is correct, defending against this potential, you know, two base all in. I don't know if he knows about the third base really quickly. Yes, he does now. There it is. So he should go for the counterattack in this position. Uh, immediately when you see the third and you see your opponent out in the field trying to make it look like it is two base all in, then uh, you, you should obviously try to threaten and force all those units back. And all the position that he was able to gain is lost because he has to defend against this counterattack since his army doesn't really have the investment that it should have with this expansion being up. 
And the big thing is that Dark Force is creep spread. He's been trying to keep on top of it, but again, those early queen snipes, pretty valuable. As you can see, Dark Force hasn't really joined it, so he can zone Ow. left or right that much. You can see immediately that Dark Force trying to see if he can get center of the map control, but the barracks reveals the position of the units, and Ryong fainting to go in. Will he actually try to draw out some of that army and engage on it? 2 2 is done. So his army is pretty resilient, and the only upgrades from uh, Dark Force is his plus one, plus one melee. This is a little bit of an awkward attack, though, from Ryung's, given his production has just now started up. And it looks like Dark Force has taken the supply lead. Here's the big oh. attack coming from multiple sides. A ton of roaches, though, are not coming into the battle. And oh no, that could be a critical misstep from Dark Force, but it looks like he might be able to clean it up as mm, it is. The big question is whether or not he's able to really deal with the Thors because the Banshees are going to be able to wail on them for a long time. The Queens are being pressured off of it, and the Thors are working. The SCVs are no longer there to repair, as, as a lot of them was dropping. And you can see the Banshees trying to work on the Queens, and this is a very tightly contested battle, but in the end, it looks like Ryung barely manages to eke out enough. And uh, Dark Force's supply is dangerously low at this point as he needed to keep a force of roaches to really push back the mechanized army. And a couple more SCVs are left to repair the Banshees and get ready to work. Dark Force wow. forced to remake his queens as well. His larva cycles have to reset. And that is going to be very tough for a Zerg player. Just think, if you had those roaches in the battle, that would have been a very easy attack for Dark Force. But unfortunately, he didn't. And uh, the battle easily went... Not easily, but it went to... Um, for young in that time around. And it looks like this counter, not this counter, this follow-up push is looking to do a lot of damage. I don't think Dark Force actually has the means to defend against this. He should probably evacuate this bottom middle base. Uh, nope. Never mind. Well, His opponent is attacking. What's going to make it even tougher is Lings are going to be borderline useless at one point, especially with plus three, plus three going to finish, and Zerg not able to really keep up in the upgrades. And, I mean, Dark Force is still on 1-1. One, one. Or, sorry, he's plus 2 did finish. That's actually a big, big thing um, in terms of keeping up slightly in the upgrades. But he doesn't have a strong answer now that Terran is really starting to grow an intimidating force. You can see the 4th base from Dark Force under siege while uh, the 5th base has been scouted. So, Dark Force has to cover a lot of area. He's instead going to go for a counterattack, which should be not that effective considering Ryung has a lot back at home. This counterattack doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, all it takes is one Thor, basically clean everything up. Hellions are pretty expendable, and they're all over the place. They can get there in time, so I'm kind of confused about that attack. But mm, as it, it is, though. <laughs> apparently it works. Uh, you know, I guess he was just thinking it could have been more, so he does back up from here. But a ton of Thors in the middle of the map, and the creep spread has been receded quite a bit. I mean, you can see the middle of the map really doesn't feature any creep spread. That's unfortunate. It gives... Um, you know, a lot of momentum and a lot of initiative over to the Terran player who's going to use that to get his opponent out of position. And with that, obviously, he will get beautiful position. Yeah, again, tanks. those c keeping the c pressure and forcing the Queens to be pulled. Creep spread is not nearly as much as it should be because Dark Force was saving for transfuses and whatnot. And as a result, uh, those Banshees have been very effective in making sure that the mech army can't get easily surrounded. Mm -hmm. Now, Dark Force is going to have to protect his expansions because, again, if Terran's able to get these strong positions and continue to hunt down the bases, then really Dark Force can't do anything. He's trying to go from different angles, but great positioning out of Ryung, and he's really able to deny any kind of surround whatsoever. Look at how fast they're dropping, especially with 3-3. Thor's with 39 damage times two on their attacks. You can see that he's immediately decimating any force that comes immediately at him. And at this point, what can Dark Force really do against this many Thors? GG. Ryong takes game number three on dual site, and it takes a very strong win in his division. Very impressive play. I, you know, I was completely just confused about Ryong's build, but the fast 3-3 three, three ended up being so powerful. And I think Dark Force was scared the whole time because he's thinking to himself, well, you know, uh, dual site is a very small map. I can be mm -hmm. rushed at any time. I need to be careful for this push. So it kept him on Lair Tech for so long, and that inevitably killed him because 
the whole time Ryong was like, hey, I'm not going to attack you. I'm not going to attack you. Got beautiful upgrades. Now I'm going to attack you. And that's where he always caught his opponent off because he was behind in upgrades the mm -hmm. whole game. Yeah, and uh, that 2-2 two -two timing was really strong initially because he didn't have the amount of roaches. Mm -hmm. And in that 3-3, three -three, I mean, what can you do when you're 2-1-2, two, two, but you're not even using Zerglings anymore to exactly. using roaches. The roaches just starting plus one. So roaches are 0-1 yeah. in that <laughs> point. I mean, not looking not good. <laughs> that's not the fair fight, fairest fight if I've ever seen one. Guys, that game in series is brought to you by iBuyPower, the PC company that can help you get your own pre-assembled computer. Just head on over to iBuyPower.com. Coming up next, we have a fantastic series, Noni versus Demaga. Noni seeking his, uh, his second win in NASL Season 3. Demaga looking to move up in divisions accordingly. Uh, also coming up next, we have a special edition of Eyes on the Community with Mr. Bitter. So we have lots of more action. We're only halfway through the day. More action from Division 2, Week 8 NASL Season 3 is coming up right after this.